Saint Gemma Galgani, also known as Flower of Luca, was an Italian mystic, often referred to as the Daughter of Passion for her intense replication of the Passion of Christ. She was born on March 12, 1878, as the fifth of eight children in her family. She was an obedient and quiet child who shared her beautiful smile with everyone. She was also exceptionally intelligent and wise at a young age. Early in her life, she longed to be united to the Lord's divine heart. Recognizing this, Gemma's mother arranged for her to receive her confirmation at the age of eight. Shortly after being confirmed, Gemma heard an inner voice ask for her consent to be separated from the mother whom she loved so dearly. Though certainly pained by such a thought, she unreservedly offered herself to God's holy will. Eventually, her mother fell ill and passed into eternal slumber. This event was the beginning of Gemma's self-surrender to God's will which inevitably led to her total unification to Christ crucified. Later, she wrote, It is impossible for me to describe what passed between Jesus and myself in that moment. He made himself felt so strongly in my soul. I realized in that moment how the delights of heaven are not like those of earth and I was seized by a desire to make that union with my God everlasting. As a day pupil at the school run by the Sisters of St. Zita, Gemma was loved by her teachers and her fellow pupil. Although quiet and reserved, she always had a friendly smile for everyone. One day, the superior of the sisters at the school once asked Gemma's teachers and her class to pray for a dying man who refused the sacraments. After the prayer, Gemma rose from her seat and going up to her teacher, whispered in her ear, The grace is granted. That evening, the news was brought that the man had indeed converted and received the consolations of the faith before his death. Throughout her life, Gemma was to be favored with many mystical experiences and special graces. Often, these were misunderstood by others, bringing ridicule. A sensitive person, Gemma suffered these heartaches too in reparation, remembering that our Lord himself had been misunderstood and ridiculed. Tragically, she had started her own spiritual journey to Calvary. First, her brother fell ill, and she had to drop out of school to tend to him. Soon afterwards, her father developed a disease and died. Gemma, too, developed a painful disease, which made it difficult for her to care for her family. Throughout her life, her frail constitution did not stand up well to several illnesses. After her father's death, the 19-year-old Gemma became the mother of her seven brothers and sisters. When some were old enough to share this responsibility, she lived briefly with a married aunt. Although she returned the love given by this aunt and uncle, Gemma was unhappy with the busy social life of the couple. At this time, two young men proposed marriage to her. Gemma, however, wanted silence and retirement, and more than ever, she desired to pray and speak only to God. She had an immense love for the poor, and when she went out, many poor people came to her for help. She helped them however she could, and she prayed for them every day. Gemma returned home and almost immediately became very ill with meningitis. Gradually, she lost her hearing and some of her hair. In addition, she suffered a complete paralysis of her limbs. All 
earthly remedies proved vain, and Gemma was confined to bed for more than a year. Instead of becoming bitter from her pain, Gemma united her suffering to Christ crucified and offered herself as a living sacrifice for the salvation of souls. With hopes of a miracle, one of the sisters gave Gemma a novena card, along with the story of the life of the young passionist Gabriel Pacenti. Gemma fervently prayed to him. He appeared to her in dreams several times, promising to help her and calling her sister. Gemma was miraculously cured through his intercession. News of the heroic patience of the gentle girl spread about the town, and many visitors came to cheer her up. For each visitor, Gemma had a smile and a welcoming comment. Gemma wished to become a nun, but her poor health prevented her from being accepted. She offered this disappointment to God as a sacrifice. Gemma also mentioned that she sometimes spoke with her guardian angel, our Blessed Mother, and other saints, especially Saint Gabriel of Our Lady of Sorrows. According to her account, she received special messages from them about present and future events. On June 8, 1899, when she was 21 years old, Gemma had a feeling that something special was going to happen. It was the eve of the Feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. She spoke of this to her confessor and received absolution. She later gave the following account to her spiritual director. It was Thursday evening, and suddenly I felt an inward sorrow for my sins, but so intense that I have never felt like that again. My sorrow made me feel as if I should die then and there. My intellect seemed to know nothing but my sins and how they offended God. Then thoughts crowded thickly within me, and they were thoughts of sorrow, love, fear, hope, and comfort. In rapture, she saw her heavenly mother, who wrapped Gemma in her mantle. At that moment, according to her own account, Jesus appeared with his wounds all open. Blood was not flowing from them, but flames of fire, which in one moment came and touched my hands, feet, and heart. I felt I was dying and should have fallen down, but for my mother who supported me and kept me under her cloak. Thus, I remained for several hours. Then my mother kissed my forehead, the vision disappeared. And then I found myself on my knees, but I had still a keen pain in my hands, feet, and heart. I got up to get into bed and saw that blood was coming from the places where I had the pain. Such marks, called the stigmata in the language of the Catholic Church, refers to the appearance of the wounds of the crucified Jesus Christ appearing on the bodies of some men and women whose lives are so conformed to His that they reflect those wounds of redemptive love for others. Each Thursday evening, Gemma would fall into rapture and the marks would appear. The stigmata remained until Friday afternoon or Saturday morning when the bleeding would stop, the wounds would close, and only white marks would remain in place of the deep gashes. Gemma's stigmata would continue to appear until her confessor, Reverend Germanus Ruopolo, advised her to pray for their disappearance due to her declining health. Through her prayers, the phenomenon ceased, but the white marks remained on her skin until her death. Through the help of her confessor, Gemma went off to live with another family where she was allowed more freedom for her spiritual life than she was at home. She frequently found herself in a state of ecstasy, and on one occasion she was believed to have levitated. At the end of her ecstasies, she returned to normal and carried on quietly and serenely. 
In spite of everything which had happened to her, Gemma understood the true joy of her way of life. She said, There is neither cross nor sorrow when we are tightly united to Jesus. In January of 1903, Gemma was diagnosed as having tuberculosis. To avoid danger to her adoptive family, she was isolated in a small apartment close to the Giannini house. She died quietly in the company of the parish priest on April 11th at the age of 25. In his testimony, he said, I have been present at many deathbeds, but never have I seen anyone die like Gemma without even a precursor sign, nor a tear, nor a panting breath. She died with a smile, which remained upon her lips so that I could not convince myself that she was really dead. Gemma Golgani was beatified on May 14, 1933, by Pope Pius XI, and canonized on May 2, 1940, by Pope Pius XII, only 37 years after her death. Hello, viewers. Sorry for interrupting the video. I just wanted to take a moment to request you to pray for us and donate if you can. If you can donate just $5, Christian Kids TV can keep making more videos like this. If you are not in a position to donate, then do pray for us. In fact, prayer support is very important to our mission. Thanks for your time, and we hope you enjoy the video.